Hi everyone, this is the fourth session of the introduction to Melvis course. My name is Mia and I will be the instructor for this lesson. To help developers configure Melvis parameters and view the data stored within Melvis more easily, we have developed a few tools which may come handy in this course. And the first tool is the sizing tool, which allows you to calculate how much hardware will be required based on the data you are inserting to the Melvis. And the second tool is the Enterprise Manager, which allows you to interact and manage Melvis graphically on the service set. And a few months ago, we released the Melvis data migration uh, that can help users to migrate data between Melvis and Melvis or Melvis Advice. If you are interested in Melvis CM, you can watch the other videos in our channel. Well, first, uh, let's take a look at Melvis sizing tool. As you can see here, we enter the number of vectors and the vector dimensions on the left side and are able to view the options for the vector type on the right. When selecting a flow vector, the sizing tool will provide the developer with recommended size of memory and disk space for five different indexes. But for binary vectors, each bit of binary vector represents a dimension but can still be represented as a direct line segment or coordinate. And among the distance methods supported by binary vectors, Jekyll, Tanimoto, and Hamming can use flight and IVI flight indexes. Well, the superstructures and substructures can only use flat. So here we can only calculate the memory and disk size required for these two indexes. Now let's take a look at how to use the sizing tool to see how much memory and disk space is needed for the different indexes. The memory has to be larger than the index file size, and the disk uh, has to store both the index file and the vector file. So the disk size has to be larger than the sum of two files. Before understanding the calculation methods, let's look at loading the data. During the first query, index files are still on the hard disk. So Melvis needs to load them to the memory. If the GPU is enabled, then there is some data that also needs to be loaded on the video memory. Loading index files from disk to memory is relatively time consuming. However, once some or all data is cached in the memory, performing searches will become very fast. Therefore, make sure that the memory of the machine and the cache size parameter of Melvis are larger than the total number of the index files to avoid poor performance due to data replacement. So, let's use 1,128 dimension vectors as an example to calculate how much memory and disk space does our machine need? Well, for flow vectors, a floating point number takes up 4 bytes. So raw vector data is 4 by its dimension, 128, and then by its total number, 1 million, which equals to 48 gigabytes. And fly has no index file, so the original vector file is loaded to the memory. But for IVF flat, uh, in addition to the raw uh, vector data, it has an IVF uh, header file of size uh, its dimension 128 by 4 and then by a list, which a list is the number of these cells in the space division when using IVF clustering. And for both IVF SQH and IVF SQAH, they will scalar quantize the vectors, thus saving CPU memory. Therefore, except for the IVF header file, their memory required size is only almost 25% of the original vector. The last one, IVF PQ, it has the same header file as the previous indexes, and it has a parameter. Uh, multiplicative quantization vector, which is m here, and the size of the index file is m by uh, number of vectors. In addition, the index file generates a table with the size and list by m and then by 32 after loading into the memory. Therefore, except for flight or other indexes, the required stable disk size is raw file size plus memory size. 
and for bad vector because they are represented by bit we need to convert them to bytes so here we divide their dimension 128 by 8 and then uh, multiple the number of vectors 1 million here and then we can get the raw file size and the, the memory size has the same principle we don't introduce too much here so this is how to calculate the required memory size and disk size next let's take a look at the Melvin's enterprise manager here in after referred to as EM as an open source basis of the web it is crucial to make it easy for users to get started with Melvis. EM helps developers manage and query Melvis data, configure their Melvis system, and monitor their system status. Installing and starting EM is very similar to Melvis. You can pull the image and start Melvis ser EM service without curve. After running the image, you can access EM service via host and port. In order to start using Melvis EM tools, you must connect the EM to Melvis using the GUI. EM's current functions are data management, vector search, and configuring Melvis service parameters. Let's take a look at each of these functions one by one to see exactly how to use them. And at the end of the video, we will take you through a hands-on installation of EM and its usage. Let's begin with the data management aspect. For example, let's choose to add a collection. You can click on the add collection and then enter collection information and then save it. After creating the collection, EM will list some basic information about the collection on the left side, such as the number of vectors it contains, the dimension and the index type and so on. In addition to the collection, we can use EM to manage indexes, vectors and partitions directly Second, we can search vectors using EM. Finally, we can easily modify the configuration of Melvis using EM. By clicking on the setting button, all the important Melvis configuration can be modified, such as network access address, vector and data, metadata paths, cache settings, GPU resources. And monitoring. So this is all the basic knowledge about EM. Then let's step to how to install and use it. Now let's try to run and start Melvis EM. Just like the way to start Melvis service, we can use Docker command to start EM. Now let's use Docker PS to check container status. Okay, you can see that we have successfully started Melvis EM. Then we can visit our Melvis EM service. Okay, now you need to connect to your Melvis service now. Then you can use our Melvis EM service. Let's try to add a collection. Test. Okay, now you can see this all information about this collection and we can try to add a partition. Okay, we can also drop this partition or we can insert some vectors into this partition. We can download this example. And then we can upload it. Okay, now you can see we have some vectors in this partition and in this collection. And also we can try to modify this configuration to uh, manage our Melvis service easily. And also you can try to search similar vectors like one two three four okay you can see the results here okay this is about all content of our members tools if you are interested welcome to try it by yourself see you in next video bye bye